Welcome back to SAP's MRP Strategies. I'm your instructor, Matthew Hunt, and we're going to start off by just talking about an overview of what the MRP strategies are before we get into the actual demos and stuff. So while MRP can be executed without assigning an MRP strategy in the MRP3 view of the Material Master, if you create a sales order or you use the demand management functions within the same plant that you're running MRP, then you will most likely want to use an MRP strategy so that your requirements are properly consumed. Otherwise, you're going to most likely overproduce because your requirements won't be getting consumed. Now, in my particular line of work, I, I've worked with companies that use dedicated manufacturing plants and they don't sell out of those manufacturing plants or they don't actually create the demand management plan they use like an APO or an IBP tool and so if that's your case um, and you don't have a need for an MRP strategy um, then you don't need to use one but like I said if you plan on creating a sales order or even if you maybe sell spare parts so some of the parts um, that you use in production you also sell as service parts or spare parts um, and you forecast those spare parts and take in sales orders for those spare parts, you are going to want to use an MRP strategy in that case. And we'll, I'll show you the specific ones you want to use for that later on. But um, just, uh, just to preface this course with uh, it's not needed for MRP, but if you do any of those things that I mentioned, um, you're definitely going to want to set up an MRP strategy. SAP has delivered some pre-configured MRP strategies in their ERP product that align with the typical sales and production processes. Um, you can add your own if you want. Uh, there is one particular example I'll show you later on where I will configure a new strategy and I'll walk you through that process of how to do that. But um, The goal of using an MRP strategy is to run your operations in a manner which improves your customer response without overproducing or having a lot of extra stock after you're done. The two main objectives that MRP tra strategies try to solve are they try to do inventory reduction as well as lead time reduction. So before we get started, what materials um, need an MRP strategy? Well, um, as you can read here on my slide, not all materials are created equal. In order to achieve the objective, typically a first step is to group your materials into groups based on classifications. So the first type of classification I would call all your cheap materials. These are um, very inexpensive parts and you should always plan these types of parts using a consumption based method of MRP like reorder point planning. The most important thing with this type of material is that you never run out of stock because the cost of shutting down your production line or losing a sale will always trump the cost of holding extra safety stock on parts like these. The second type of material is a material that has a really long replenishment lead time or is a very expensive material. Um, these particular um, types of materials are more sophisticated um, or require a more sophisticated planning method as well as a lot more human intervention by the planners. So these are the types of materials that you should be looking at putting an MRP strategy around. What to consider when choosing a strategy, because as we get into it, you'll see there's a lot of MRP strategies that come pre-configured. So what should you be taking into consideration when choosing the right strategy? Well, the first thing you probably want to ask yourself is what level of the uh, bomb, the bill of material, will I be doing my demand management at? So demand management um, is a, um, an, an SAP term um, forecasting. Um, is more of a generic term for um, the the demand management module, although there is a forecasting module as well as a demand management module in SAP. Um, there, for the sake of this course, I'm going to use the two terms kind of interchangeably. When I say demand management, or I may use the term independent requirements, um, or I may use the term forecast. All of them, um, as it pertains to this course that I'm teaching, I, I really just mean that independent requirements plan. 
So what level of the bomb will you be doing that at? Are you going to be doing that at the finished goods level, meaning the final assembly? Are you going to be doing that at the component level, meaning one level down in the bomb from that final assembly? Um, or at least one level down. Um, it can be multiple levels down. Or are you going to be doing it at a phantom level? So if you're familiar with phantom assemblies um, in your bill of materials, um, you may be doing planning at that level. At what point do I want to produce the final assembly? So do you want a make to stock operations uh, where you're building the final assembly and putting it in stock and then sales orders are um, issuing from final stock? Or do you want to do a make to order operation where you're not building the final assembly, you're waiting until a sales order comes in and then once the sales order comes in you produce the final assembly and you're selling against a specific um, order. Third thing that you want to consider, at what point do I want to procure my components? So if you got long time, uh, long lead time components, some of the questions you want to ask are do I want to keep components um, on hand prior to the sale or can I wait to purchase the components till after the sale? And like I said, the main driver of that is the lead time of the component parts. Um, and whether you can absorb that lead time into um, the customer's expectations of when they're going to get the product. Fourth thing is, should my current stock levels influence my production or procurement? Meaning, um, if I've already got enough on hand to um, suffice for my sales orders or my requirements, um, do I want to continue producing or not? And um, there are examples I'll show later on where you would want to keep producing even though you have stock on hand. So from a material master data setup, um, we will be in the MRP views, specifically the MRP 3 and 4 views. And so um, as you can see in my slide here under the MRP 3 view, the uh, window that says planning, there's a field called strategy group. And now within a strategy group, you can have multiple MRP strategies. You can have a main strategy, and then you can have, I think, up to, I want to say, nine more alternative strategies. Um, but I've taken a screenshot, and believe it or not, this screenshot isn't the entire list. Um, as I said, SAP delivers a lot of pre-configured MRP strategies. But... Um, you can see here there are some examples like 10 is a make to stock production example 40 if you're doing make to stock 40 is probably the most common uh, make to stock strategy and that's planning with a final assembly so you can see here um, this is meant to show you uh, there's a lot of uh, pre-configured strategies that SAP already has for you um, right below the MRP strategies you'll see a box that says consumption mode and then you'll see um, a box to the right of it that says backwards consumption periods and then below it forward consumption periods. Um, in the next slide I'm going to talk about what consumption mode is but I just wanted to call that out to you that it is um, in the MRP3 view. And then um, later on when we get into component level strategies um, the box in MRP3 below backwards consumption that says mixed MRP um, we will be using that field um, as well when we get into component level planning. So this is the MRP3 view. Um, MRP4, there's really only one field um, that we'll be using and it's the field called the individual collection screen and as you can see um, by my screen there I've got um, a 2 in there. Um, again, um, 2 is probably the most common, that's for um, separate requirements. Um, I think a one is it combines requirements um, or collects all the requirements together. So um, just to point that out to you when we are talking about the setup of each of the strategies so you know where each of those fields are in the material master. So now we'll talk about consumption logic. Like I said, consumption mode as well as the backwards period and forward periods that you want to consume. That's on the MRP3 view. 
An, impart, an important part of MRP strategy is the consumption of planned requirements with actual requirements. The consumption mode in the MRP3 view determines whether the consumption of requirements is done in a backwards, forwards, or in a backwards and forwards both directions fashion. So I'm going to give you an example with some of these tables below of what I mean by a backwards uh, consumption versus a forward versus uh, both a backwards and forwards. So if you see my top table where it says before sales orders, this is like an MDO4 view um, where you've got an MRP element and you've got the requirements and a date. So you see I have two independent requirements, one on May 1st, 2018, another one on May 5th, 2018 for a quantity of 100 each. If I set my consumption mode to a um, a, a backwards only consumption mode, then what I would get would be the screen immediately at the bottom to the left where it says backwards consumption. What you would get is when a sales order comes in and as you can see I created a sales order for May 4th for a, a quantity of 80. What it's going to do is it's going to consume the independent requirements immediately behind it um, or immediately before it. Backwards means immediately before it. And so as you see my sales order is for 80. My original independent requirement was for 100. It's going to consume 80 units out of the independent requirement and my independent requirements are going to be left with 20. If my sales order was for more, like let's say it was for 120, um, it's only going to go in a backwards fashion. It's never going to go forward because I've selected a backwards only consumption method. But if I had a second independent requirement that was even earlier than the May 1st one, let's say I had an independent requirement out there for um, April 20th, it would first consume all of the 100 from May 1st and it would say, okay, well, you still have. 50 left over because your sales order was 450. So then it would go to the um, April 20th independent requirement and it would consume 50 units out of it. And if there was a balance left over, then whatever the balance left over that wasn't consumed would show up in your um, MRP. Um, otherwise, it would consume all of that and it would continue moving backwards until it's consumed all of the requirements. Or I've hit the end of that. Um, backwards consumption period that I set up in the MRP3 view. So in the backwards consumption period in MRP, I can say how far I want it to go into, um, how far backwards I want it to go. And so for example, if I put in um, a backwards consumption period of 30 days, it will go backwards consuming planned independent requirements um, until it either consumes the entire sales order with requirements or I've hit the end of that period. In, in other words, it'll only go back 30 days. Forward consumption is another consumption mode um, that you can choose. And the forward consumption works just like the backwards, except it moves forward. So it's independent requirements older than the sales order. So again, in my example, um, I've, I've set up on May 4th a sales order this time. I said I only my sales orders for only 20 units, so it moves forward, finding the first independent requirement ahead of my sales order, and it consumes from that, and so it consumed 20 units from that, and it leaves 80 units left um, for MRP to plan for that independent requirement. Again, if it consumes the entire thing, it's going to keep marching forward until it either consumes the entire sales order with independent requirements or I reached that um, consumption consumption forward period. So in the MRP3 view, I, create, I could create a consumption forward period um, and I can set that to 30 days, 60 days, what, however far I want to consume requirements into the future. The third option, there is a backwards forwards, or there's also a forward backwards. Um, backwards forward means it first goes backwards, then it goes forward, and then it goes backwards, and then it goes forward. It goes back and forth, consuming um, around the sales order. So in this example, um, I had a sales order for 120 on May 4th. It first went backwards and consumed the 100 units and uh, that were on May 1st. And so it left me with zero re requirements on May 1st. 
but it still had a balance left of 20 units. Instead of continuing going backwards, it then, once it consumes the entire independent requirement on May 1st, it goes forward. And, and so it, it consumes the tw remaining 20 units from my order, uh, my independent requirement on May 5th. And so there's 80 units left on, on May 5th. That process goes back and forth um, over and over again until it either can either one consumes the entire sales order with requirements, or like I said, it it hits the um, backwards or forward consumption period. And so once it can no longer consume um, backwards or forwards, it will stop consuming requirements. Assigning a requirements type. So a requirements type contains the configuration that controls the consumption of the independent requirements. Standard SAP is already configured with strategy groups to meet most of your requirement needs, so you shouldn't have to configure any new strategies. But like I said, if you do, um, there is one example I'll show you um, later on when we get into um, spare parts uh, where I will show you how to configure a new one. The system will automatically determine the correct requirements type to assign to the independent requirements based on the strategy group that you've set up in the MRP3 view of the Material Master. And you see I've got a picture here of the MD61 or MD62 um, planned independent requirements screen. This is where you enter the planned independent requirements. When I enter the material, it automatically um, looks at the material master and it automatically pulls in my requirements type, my consumption indicator, and my strategy group. So um, because I chose for this particular materials um, a planning strategy of 40, you see it automatically uh, pulled in the VSF requirements type, consumption indicator 1, and strategy group 40. Note at the bottom, if the strategy group contains more than one planning strategy, then the system proposes first the main strategy type. But it will allow you in the MD62 screen um, that I'm showing here, it will allow you to override um, the, require, the default requirements type to one of the alternative planning strategies. All right, this is the last slide uh, before we get into um, the next videos and the next lessons where we'll actually deep dive into the strategies. I just want to tell you um, typically how I um, lay, um, how, I how I do my instruction. Um, all my MRP strategy courses, I'm going to focus on um, these five stages. I'll break I'll break the strategy down into these five stages and tell you the specific events that happen in each one of the stages. So the first stage will always be the demand management side. And this is this stage is where the independent requirements are generated. So that MD61 uh, view that I just showed you. Stage two I call procurement or or we could also say production before sales. Um, and in this stage, um, procurement or production drive the same thing. So if it's an in-house make part or an external house or external uh, procured material, it doesn't really matter. MRP reacts the same way at this stage. So I just call it g generically procurement before sales. In this stage, components are purchased or produced prior to a sales order being generated by the customer. In stage three, this is where the sales order is generated. So um, custom, actual customer demand comes in. Stage four is procurement or production again after the sale. So in this stage, components are purchased or produced after a sales order has come in. The last stage then is the goods issue of the order and consumption of the planned independent requirements. All right, that is the end of uh, this video. And so... Um, I would encourage you, hopefully you've taken some good notes. There are quizzes at the end of all my sections. Uh, when you are ready to proceed to the next video, we're going to be talking about make-to-stock strategies. So when you're ready, I will see you in that video.